You're listening to Desync Nerds, a Nintendo Switch podcast. This is episode 31, airing on Monday, the 7th of May. We're your hosts. I'm Colin. He's Devin, bringing you all the latest news and hot topics from around the internet. This week, we have golf stories, physicals are on the way, more E3 updates, and late breaking Switch news. Woo! But first, Devin, Weekend Gaming, what you been doing? Uh, I continue to drown in the sea of homework. But I did try the new Pinball FX3 patch, and I've learned that I can't tell the difference between 30 FPS and 60 FPS, so. <laughs> I, we just lost literally every subscriber with that statement right there. So many angry people. No, no, hold on, hold on. I'll make it better. Did you know that anything above 23 frames per second is not perceptible to the human eye? <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but it's my favorite thing on the planet. It's especially great when you actually see the gif of like 30 FPS and then a 60 FPS animation, like they're side by side. Yeah, this is night and day different. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what did you play? Tell me you did something. Uh, I almost did. I played a very, very small amount of Mario Rabbids, and that's about it. I keep missing the Splatfests, and it keeps frustrating me, especially because my boy needed my help, and I wasn't there for him, and he lost. And that's that game needs to come offline immediately. <laughs> After that loss? I mean, There's he won, no way. He won the popular vote. I mean, of course he did. He's the leader. We're not going to get into the political rants that we got into. Anyway, I'm ready to move on to the news. You ready to move on? Let's move on to the news. Hey, listen. All right. First thing up, Twitch plays Breath of the Wild. I can't believe that's a thing, but it's a thing. Yeah, so if, if you were hiding under a rock, they did Twitch plays Pokemon, I think it was, was the very first one. And it was, it was wildly popular. It was kind of a meme, what? Fantastic nine months ago a year ago it was a while ago definitely in 2017 sometime anyway so so you type ch commands into the chat and in the chat it it then like cr translates that into a character move it makes a lot of sense for a turn-based game like pokemon it's a little weirder with a game like breath of the wild though uh but we do know that this is possible because th this particular uh twitch chat recently beat super mario odyssey not too long ago, and then before that, it beat uh, one of the Dark Souls. I don't remember which one, but one of them. So, was it Super Mario Odyssey or was it Kirby Star Allies? Both. What they beat both? Okay, that's crazy. Yeah, it took them three weeks to beat Kirby Star Allies, which I think speaks Same. to the, the difficulty of that game. Um, wow, a million Shakespeare or a million monkeys with a million Shakespeare? Or wow, I'm just gonna butcher that. A million monkeys with a million typewriters will eventually write the works of Shakespeare. Nope. Is that what's going on here? Yeah, it's basically what's going on here. Anyway, save me from bad phrases. I can't. Yeah, let me just read some more of the stuff that you wrote, monkey. Luminize, lumi luminous, luminous got delayed. I'm also a monkey. <laughs> Neither of us can speak. It's okay. This is why we spend like a half hour before the show talking so that we kind of, you know. Luminize exactly yeah and then we never get it right so we still bomb everything anyway yeah it got delayed to june 26th and i'm sad because i really like these games i uh i got the first one on psp for definitely 100 percent legitimate reasons and then actually really enjoyed it and had a lot of fun with it so i'm into this did you do you care you don't care nope negative care <laughs> negative care okay uh next up interview with the new nintendo president which you one. also really care about. <laughs> yeah, so new Nintendo president, he had... It was a very, very short interview. I don't actually know where this is even from. But... So there was just like a brief outlining of his, his stance towards the company and moving it forward. He says that he spent the last two years mapping out Nintendo's future. Which seems a little crazy to me, given that he was just like a random board member before. Like, he wasn't... I don't know. I guess maybe he knew that he was going to leave the company. Uh, he also said that he has a desire to change Nintendo internally, which, please, God, do something, because, as we'll get to later, they make, they make some decisions that... <sighs> Why well, you gotta break my heart, Nintendo? And then finally, he said that he's attempting to... He wants to attempt to bring down the number of people involved in any given decision. Basically, they, he feels like they're being bogged down by committee after committee, which someone who's worked in you know a small company even I, I i'm familiar with this problem i sure you see a lot of that too how do they have so many people helping make decisions and they still pick literally the worst one every single time i don't understand 
I mean, well, at least they moved off the voice chat thing, and now we can use, you know, headsets into our controllers and not a third-party app. Or not third-party, but a secondary app. <laughs> oh, wait, that's my wishful thinking again. Anyway. Anyway. Runner 3 is coming. What is Runner 3? Runner 3 is a uh, bit trip runner, if you're familiar with that. It's an old rhythm game that the original one had Anamanaguchi do their whole soundtrack, which... Is on a monopia? Not quite. In any mm. case, it's a great chiptunes stuff. Uh, it's releasing on May 22nd, and they are really leaning into the, like... Uh, this was a big thing, I want to say, like, two years ago, where all of the indie games would just have massive crossovers. You know, Super Meat Boy was in Shovel Knight, and... and What else? There were a bunch. There were a bunch in, like, Spelunky, too. And, and your Sonic was in Hooters. I forgot about that. Thank you for bringing that one to the forefront of my mind. Yeah, you're welcome. Honestly, wa wanted to wipe that off my, off my brain. <laughs> Some scars never healed, Evan. Yeah, no joke. In any case, they are also going to ha so uh, for Runner Three, they're bringing in the voice of Mario, not not as Mario, but as as himself. He's Charles Martinet, and then also Shovel Knight, and then a bunch of people that I have no idea what any of them are uh, because I don't keep up on any games because I've become everything I hate about the game industry. <laughs> But yeah, this is a thing. I'm excited. I like these games a lot. What? I was just going to save you from yourself and move on. Uh, the next thing up, there was a financial Q&A. What happened in this Q&A? Uh, not anything we cared about. Move on. <laughs> but not actually. Um, I mean, it was pretty not relevant to us. They talked mostly about the new mobile game and how they're doing that. Uh, there's a link in the show notes. I think the old president got questioned a little bit on the whole 20 million sales thing. And that's the only thing that's remotely relevant, but it's kind of like businessy and salesy, so I didn't want to get too far into it. But if you care about Nintendo beyond just the Switch, it's there. I'm really excited for the new mobile game because I like wasting money on mobile game with Gachapon. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> uh, let's move on then. Steam now officially supports the Switch Pro Controller. Nice. Yeah, this one I'm actually excited about, except I think I've lost my Bluetooth dongle, so it's less interesting to me. But uh, So yeah, if you have a Bluetooth dongle and you opt to get the Steam beta client, which is really easy to do, there's actually a, there's a guide in the show notes that'll walk you through it. It's, it's really straightforward, though. Um, the crazy part to me is that it contains the motion controls. They explicitly call out playing FPSs with motion controls. So PUBG with the Pro Controller, let's go. I mean, I'm down. I might, it can't make me any worse. Very true. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm into this, though. I like this idea. I, giving more use to the $90 Pro Controller is a great thing, because... Oh my god, it was $90. Why do you do this to me, Nintendo? Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, moving on. Golf Story got rated for the ESRB for a physical release. Yeah, so... That's exciting. Everybody loves physical releases. Is this, will this be the thing that finally gets you to play Golf Story? It's going to be a price point thing for me. If it's like 15 bucks or 20 bucks. I think 30 is, is it, literally the lowest we've seen in a physical. That's, yeah, that's fair. Do we know who's, who's doing it? Is it Nintendo doing it or is it Limited Run Games doing it? Uh, I actually have that. As, so Limited Run Games, and we'll talk about this further, is... No, we won't, because I didn't put it in here because it was kind of boring. Uh, Limited Run Games is teasing a new game, but it's not this, I'm pretty sure. Because they said it's from a development company that's got a long list of big titles, so... So but, that's not Golf Story? Yeah, Golf Story, this is their first game, so... It being physical definitely makes it more attractive, and I keep hearing only good things about this, so... It was a fun game. Yeah, and exactly, and you like it, so I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, the fact that I don't like it is kind of a mark against it, let's be honest. Fair. Wow, rude. Why would you say that? Because <laughs> I hate you. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, E3 floor plans released, and they've got some big space taken up. Uh, so Nintendo has the largest floor space of any other single exhibitor at the show. What? Is that true? They look like... It looked like Sony had more now. Sony has more, except Nintendo has two separate pieces that are in the same hallway, and they're like, it's it's a cross. There's like a walkway in between them, and on between the two spaces, it's bigger. Mm -hmm. Go pull up the picture. 
There's a picture in the show notes. Well, I remember looking at the picture because Sony's also got one of those, but it's like a really thin line. It's not really like, I don't know. You're going to make me like stealthily pull it up. Oh, God, I didn't put it in the show notes. Okay, never mind. I don't have that access to that link right now. I mean, even still, it's huge. Like, comparable, if not a little bigger than Sony. So that's that's crazy. That's awesome. And I wonder what they're going to... expect like... to hear about Pokemon. Let's not throw uh, Reddit kids under the bus. Um, okay, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I kind of excited with what they do with this i don't really know what they do with more space though like yeah i i also am afraid to like speculate that this actually means anything because it's just floor space that that doesn't necessarily mean maybe one half of that is a giant mario statue that doesn't mean anything no that so. means they have a giant mario statue which is news in and of itself right sorry i forgot my bad i'm into this already <laughs> anyway that's a thing I will fix that and put them in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. Rhythm game Voez returns to the eShop after a brief hiatus. So, it's a thing. They added a, uh, a song, not a game like I wrote. They added a song that violated their ESRB rating, and so they got taken down, and they had to fix that. So, Did they say heck one too many times in it? Yeah, or something. Like, what is, what is the ESRB rating for a, a rhythm game? Probably E, I would assume. Yeah, so did they say heck in a song? Like, what, what, how did you I mean, mess that up? I would actually expect one of the, like, low-tier swear words that would be what caused it. Oh, poop. Or some no. kind of, like, adult theme of, like, drinking or something in one of the songs. I don't know. Something like that. But yeah, this is actually a, a pretty solid rhythm game, too. Tristan played it, and he was losing his mind over how enjoyable it was. This, that was, like, one of the first ones, too, actually. Yeah, it was the first demo I downloaded because it was one of, like, three or something. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, next up, the federal government is officially investigating Nintendo for patent infringement. Uh-oh. Yeah, so we reported on this last week. It is they they've made an official statement. Uh their direct statement about what the issue is is thus. The products at issue in this investigation are controller systems with parts that attach to two sides of an electronic device, such as a smartphone or tablet, and the parts fit into the user's hands and have gaming controls. So that's 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 what the patent co- uh, patents, and yeah, patent troll's gonna patent troll. I mean, I'll be really sad if this affects Nintendo in like any actual negative way because this is it's so dumb. It's so not the same thing. It just happens to remotely be the same thing, but like it doesn't serve the same purpose. But Colin, it's a t- it's a controller system that attaches to an electronic device to two sides of an electronic device. They even have the same number of sides, okay? It's basically the exact same thing. I mean, I'm trying to think of an example of like other things that are like that, but that, it is, that is pretty unique, yeah. Oh my god, please, Nintendo, please. <laughs> please hire the bestest lawyers. I mean, Nintendo never does anything that makes sense, so obviously they'll hire some kid fresh out of law school. <sighs> they'll hire some kid who just put together a Labo kit. <laughs> there's a, there's a <laughs> lawyer Labo a kit? <laughs> yeah. He's clearly wicked smart. He figured it out. Hey, man, not even Bill Nye could figure it out, so... That's fair. That's wicked fair. Anyway, let's move on. Joy-Con tennis attachments have been released. Yeah, so... I wonder what this is for. I I really don't understand it at all. Like, that was literally why I put it in here, because I want someone to explain to me who this is for. What is the purpose? Remember when the Wii was the best thing on the planet? Wouldn't you want to repeat that? But it, it, like... It's literally just a plastic shell. It doesn't do anything. Weren't they all? Weren't they all? You just stick the Wii mode in it, and then and then now it's a thing. Yeah, I guess. Fight me. But why? I mean, the the why is the wrong question. <laughs> why not? If you have a use for this, or if you have any reason for this to be a thing that buy, that you would buy, please let me know at Desync Nerds on Twitter. God, because I'm so lost. I don't understand. Uh, that's why this is... You gotta put some realism in your games, Devin. I'm not dignifying that with a response. Please move on. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, gorgeous JRPG port Battle Chasers Night War has details released. Woo! 
Yeah, so it is 2.6 gigs, and there's some uh, camera footage, like over-the-shoulder camera footage of the game being played, and I mean, it's camera footage, so it's hard to tell what it actually looks like, but the original game looked really good. And uh, this actually releases in a week. It releases on the 15th of May. I think you are into this. Are you buying this? Do you have it ordered? I've already pre-ordered it, yeah. Do you actually yeah, have it pre-ordered? Fine. Yeah, of course I do. Are you kidding me? I have had this pre-ordered since you reminded me about it a month ago, two months ago. Whatever the last show that we talked about it was. Let me check my open orders just to make sure. I got Sonic Media Plus, Valkyrie Chronicles 4. Yeah, Battle Chasers Night were right there. Right ahead of my uh, Yeast 8, Super Smash Brothers, Dark Souls Remastered, and uh, Wolfenstein. See, Come I, at me. I was going to put you on blast for this, and then you just did it yourself, and I, I don't even have to do anything. You just... <laughs> just... I, uh, I anticipate being very poor, so I uh, loaded myself up with gifts. Weddings are uh, very expensive. That's uh, who would have thunk. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you have to tell me how this is because I'm kind of into it, but also JRPGs, that scares me. I need to look it up on the how long to beat, actually. That's a good idea. Because it does look really pretty, and I've heard really good things about it. I'm so excited for it. I've been excited for it since 2012 when we first saw it. Fair enough. Anyway, let's move on. Nintendo released the Donkey Kong country website and hit something in it Don kong tropical freeze website you threw me off with your dkc i I heard you like struggling with it i'm like do i save him like dkc it's it's tz not k not c what is c oh country why are you so terrible at writing tropical freeze tz anyway anyway there's a website they put it up go find a thing Yeah, so you can find the uh, the standard Kong letters, K-O-N-G, throughout it. And if you do so, you get 100 platinum points. And I just love this as like a, a, a thing that they did. It seems like a really cool idea. I don't know. I wish it was gold points because I'm a, school, I'm a spoiled child, but, but also it's cool for what it is, I guess. What's, what's the difference? Uh, platinum points aren't actually worth anything. They don't do anything. Like, I, I wish I was kidding. They're super limited... Uh, stuff that you can do with platinum points like right now you can buy a donkey kong tropical freeze desktop for your pc and that's the only thing on offer right now which you totally can't just find on google images exactly yeah and that's kind of the issue is that it's kind of pointless occasionally they put discounts out through that but they haven't done literally any of those for the switch since they started the switch so um I think I mean the switch is only a, a year and two months old, so it's not too that's not shocking. <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to keep my hater aid at a reasonable level and this this pikes it. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but anyway, ready to move on? Yeah. As you alluded to at the start of the show, Pinball FX3 has patch notes and a patch released. Yep, so it gave handheld mode 60 FPS, dark 1080p. And yeah, as I said, I can't actually tell. I, I might be able to tell with the 1080p because I didn't actually play it on a, compu- on a monitor yet. Or a docked, that's the word. But yeah, that's the thing. I'm excited for it, even if I can't tell. Is it supposed to be 60 FPS in handheld? Yeah, it's 60 FPS in all modes for sure. now. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Interesting. Then- I, bet, I bet it would be much easier to tell on... Uh- on a TV, for yeah. sure. But Probably. that's just me. Who knows? I realize that it's me that has to control this next step. Yeah, that's why I just got quiet for a minute. <laughs> I'm like, is he going to go? What's, what's, what's he waiting for? Oh, anyway. Did you want me to, to address it next, or did you want to go down the list in order? Let's just go down the list. Okay, then take her away. Oh, okay, this is me. On to the question of the time period. I want to know if you are going to watch the Nintendo E3 presentation. And if you are going to do so, you should. Or if you're not going to do so. Regardless. Hey, your, t- your, your tank just turned off. Um, regardless of timer. whether or not you're going to do it, you should vote in the poll. The options are yes and live. Or yes and hopefully something hopefully something from someone with con- commentary. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. We'll try to do commentary. Uh, yes, but I'll watch the VOD. Or nope. And the link to vote on that is bit.ly slash dsnpoll30. Because we move forward. Woo! Imagine that. 
All right, on to the segment. So we had some late breaking news. That's why the show's a little bit late, and that's why my aquarium lights have turned off. Uh, we just discovered the, the Nintendo Online Switch news that they said would come in early May. It's early May, and it's here now. I was actually just thinking about this morning. Like, it's early May. What's going on, Nintendo? Come on. Chop, chop. Complain and I shall receive. Except yeah, no joke. But yeah, just there. Right. Huh? First thing up, a selection of NES games are going to be available to play online. It's not going to be a virtual console. It appears to be anyway. Yeah, so there's some question about this. Honestly, they're not, they're not being too clear, and we have a lot of old conflicting information, so who actually knows? I, I know that originally when they announced this, they said it was going to be a rotating selection a la uh, Netflix, but then they dialed that back, and so now we're here to... Literally, all they've said is a selection of NES games online, available to play online. Uh, the list currently is soccer, tennis... Donkey Kong, Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 3, Balloon Fight, Ice Climber, Dr. Mario, the and The Legend of Zelda. And then 10 more that are currently to be announced. And this is, as they've said, the 20 that will be available on release. So they're not... We're going to get 20 NES games on release. And I don't... I just... I feel like with Virtual Console in the Wii U era, they had stuff through the GameCube. They had games, GameCube games. And now we're starting over from scratch with 20 NES games. Like, unless this expands like exponentially over the first six months or so, this is this is going to be a disappointment. It's just that's just life. It's just going to be a disappointment. You're going from basically the whole back catalog to 20 select games off one console. Like, I don't know. As much as I hate to speculate, I feel like. They absolutely will. Like, just give them, just give them time. This is the first thing they've they've pushed this back numerous times already. Obviously, they're having some issues somewhere, so that's probably on the back burner for now. I can't imagine that this is it's just going to be NES games forever. Terrible NES game. Well, not terrible, but a tiny subset of NES games forever. Yeah, I want to hope I, you're just right. Pump your brakes, kid. It's gonna get better. No, it can only get better. I just. I would rather see a virtual console. Like, let me buy these. But if they're going to do both of those things, then yeah, I don't care what you do. And put whatever games you want here. Yeah, as put long 10 as... 10 versions of Shaq, Shaq Street Fighter, I don't care. Oh, that was such a good game. No, yeah. it's not. If, if they end up doing the virtual console as well, then yeah, I don't care. This is totally just a bonus. But we've still heard nothing about virtual console at this point, and we're, as you said, a year and two months into the life cycle. Like, if that but were... We've, this has also been pushed back almost a year wasn't it supposed to come out in november of the first year and now it's coming out september of this year like it's they're obviously having some some issues here so they're obviously struggling because they're doing their own thing rather than just following the blueprint um anyway they did say also that there will be dedicated online play for all of these games which i think is kind of or for they didn't actually specify now that i think about it they just said online play what they said multiplayer play for the first time for these titles yeah, but did they specify all titles, or did they just say, or they said these titles? Okay, so okay. Uh, the language is very—I feel like the language is very carefully chosen here. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So if they go all the way with that, I would love to play like Super Mario Brothers three online. I think that would be really cool to do like co-op Super Mario Brothers three over, over Absolutely. the in intertubes. But. As I said, with very, very colorful, angry language, they're sticking with the app. They're sticking with just plug it into your phone, listen to your headset on your phone. And I just, I, I can't, I can't be okay with that. There's no part of me that is ever going to be satisfied with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And I, I just, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The reason that I don't play Splatoon online, the reason I don't say, hey, let's go play Splatoon online instead of, you know, PUBG, which is what our go-to is right now, is because I don't want to fight with, like, I don't have a good all-in-one headset right now. I don't have that for me. I have these Bluetooth headphones that sound like garbage on both ends, so it's just, it's not really, like, feasible for me to do. And I just, why not just put it in the app? Why not just give me something that plugs into the Pro Controller and lets me do voice chat that way? 
This is a thing. Yeah, and that's that's not something that we've got any reason to believe is going to change or improve. So, like, yeah. whereas the games, I feel like they need to. They're going to. They have to. I don't. I don't know that that'll change the the app, the voice app. They explicitly call out the voice app in their recent uh, this this news right here, and that may be because that's all they have to talk about. I don't like, I don't know, maybe maybe that's all it'll ever be, and then games in the future will have their own, like, like in-game, on-card ones. I don't know. I really hope this is the, that's like the first and last game that ever gets it. I mean, yeah, 100%. I 100% agree. If they moved on and we just had a deal with Splatoon 2 having crappy voice chat for, and that was the price we paid for everybody else to have real voice chat, then cool. I would be perfectly happy with that, but... But to save our listeners from from uh, angry Devin rants, as we alluded to a couple times already, online play. So there are they they've listed on their site a few games that require online play, and uh, they said that uh, in the future the more games that require it will be listed as you know as they come available at the, as the information comes available. So far, the games that they have listed are uh, Splatoon 2, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Mario Tennis, which isn't even out yet, um, and which which other ones I'm missing here arms and the most important one of all you know the most important one. Oh my god no just can we just skip that one just it's, forget that forget i even started this 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 part it's sushi striker oh my god sushi striker yeah sushi striker that the game that everybody's waiting for i mean it's that the most anticipated Nintendo yeah i just love that they're giving so much like play to this game that it, it, it doesn't to me, it doesn't look that interesting. It, it came out of nowhere. It looks like a mobile game. That's yeah. 100% looks like a mobile game. Like, why? And yet they're pushing it so hard. Like, it, it just, all I can say is, bless your hearts, Nintendo. This is so adorable. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, so, the important thing to note about that statement there, though, with the online play, is they, they specifically, every single one that they call out in their list, which is, as he said, is, these are Nintendo titles. They don't mention Rocket League. They don't mention Doom. They don't mention, you know... Anything all... else with a multiplayer, an online multiplayer. Yeah, it's, it's all Nintendo stuff. And so that leads me to wonder, is this a thing that you can choose to participate in? Or is this, like, you know, how are they going to do that? Do they, do they not call out Rocket League because of trademark issues? Or do they not call out Rocket League because they're not sure if Rocket League is going to participate? And that, to me, is the most interesting question raised out of all of this. Which and I feel like um, I, I I definitely hear what you're saying. That is definitely a weird omission. But I feel like those games have to be on here. They ab- absolutely have to be. There's no reason, like for for what Nintendo is talking about, those games have to be on here for them to work in online play because they're cutting out everything that isn't like the eShop and um, social like, media like sharing manageable options. And she's, she's like, I'll fight you. It's just uh, you know. It, it sounds like if you want to play online at all, Nintendo or not, you're going to need this. But they've only specified Nintendo titles. So, yeah, that's very, very strange. Again, with the very, very, very carefully chosen, hand picked words. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully, we'll see some updates to this over the next week or so as they kind of like figure out, oh, people are confused about this. Let's, let's make that more explicit or whatever. But, yeah. and then, uh, you want to tell us about the final feature? Yes. The uh, and the final feature, of course, everybody wanted, everybody needed, save cloud, save data, backup cloud, cloud backup, cloud data backup, save cloud data backup. Yes. Are you good? So no longer, no longer will you have to be beholden to your your amiibos. And I didn't even realize that that's not exactly a, a clean system. I thought that was like you just pick the amiibo and save it to that. I guess I was wrong. I never tried to do it so. So yeah, yeah, this is a thing. I'm a little disappointed this is going behind a paywall, especially because anyone else would just... Like, if you put a USB stick into your PS4, you can just download those saves, right? Yeah. And so to put this behind a paywall is just... Hashtag Nintendo thing. So the amount of complaining I do about Nintendo, you would think I hate them, but... I know. I, I mean, I feel like it is what it is. The price is cheap, which we'll talk about in a second. Like cheap enough that I, I just I don't care. And there's ways to mitigate the price too. So, uh, it's it is it's whatever. It is what it is. I honestly would rather be able to pay for it online like this than do what I've been doing with my 3ds's, which is just I just don't get to keep my saves. Period. Because these 3ds's <laughs> are awful to transfer. 
How many times have you bought or started over these games? Or just bought new games, actually. How many times did you buy Zelda? Uh, uh, the 3DS Zelda, the Ocarina of Time remake, a couple times. Like, at least three. So that's a few. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. So as long as we're moving away from that, you're happy? Yes, absolutely. Really, it was Pokemon that I, I bought the most of repeated, repeatedly. Mm. But that's yeah. Fair. You mentioned so anyway, the pricing. You want to tell me about the prices? Yeah. Let's move on to the pricing. So your options are $4 per month, $8 for three months, or $20 for a year. Or you can set up a family plan where you have uh, basically seven access codes for a year for 35 bucks. So you can split that 35 bucks among seven people and pay five bucks for a year. Yep. And that is what Quick I will maths. end up doing. <laughs> did, you, did you actually do that math? I thought that was a guess. Uh, did you bust out the on. abacus before the show? No, I'm currently playing with Gundam parts, so. Oh, okay, okay. No, I did not bust out anything before the show. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, and, and that, that is kind of the, the killer piece here, is that it's cheap. It's, what, two months of Xbox Live, I think, is more than a year of the Switch Online. So it's basically free, and that's what's making it acceptable in my mind. I'm still frustrated, but at least it's basically free. I'll say that. Yeah, and I'll agree 100%. You got any other thoughts on this before we? I totally missed this. Um, th- I mean, so yeah, twenty bucks. That's it's ridiculously cheap. I don't know anything that's cheaper than that. So I can't like even if there was almost nothing here, which currently is the case, I still wouldn't be upset. Really, I would just pay twenty bucks just for the save data alone, being able to back up to the cloud. We shouldn't have to. Yeah, absolutely, you shouldn't have to. But, I mean, well, and, and I'm about to lose my online functionality for things like Splatoon and Mario Kart 8. So, for those two things, 20 bucks is worth it, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, at this point in time, I can stomach paying for online play. Like, that to me is not terrible, especially because everybody else does everybody it. Everybody else does it. Yeah. yeah. And that is kind of what makes that acceptable, but... It's the online backup and the lack of a voice app and just <sighs> I wasn't expecting a, a, like a better voice app I guess maybe that's why I'm okay with it because I wasn't expecting anything better or more than what we're getting here this is this is about exactly what I was expecting See, maybe that's the difference between us yeah I mean I just don't understand how they can flub what is basically a, a default feature we can we can plug voice chat into any game that we play and it just does it and yet nintendo can't figure it out for yeah i'm gonna get caught up in a whiny rant again so (laughs) let's move on god those are so loud for me um, that one that one was pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I might go edit that then. Anyway, if you want to email the show, you can do so at desyncnerds at gmail.com. We would love to hear about you on any of these topics or anything else that you have to say. If you prefer Twitter, you can tweet at the show at desyncnerds or at either of us individually. I am at Kulana, K-U-L-A-N-A-H, and he is at DSN Colin, DSN C-O-L-I-N. If you want to support the show, we are on Patreon at patreon.com slash desyncnerds. And if you want to support the show but you cannot do so monetarily, you can rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher. If you want to catch us live, we will be live next Monday at 6.30 PST. Unless Nintendo releases more news at 6.15 PST, as they did this week. Also 9.30 EST and 2.30 AM on Tuesday in the UK. Again, for all of those link- for all of that, we are on at twitch.tv slash desyncnerds. Uh, our VODs will be up on YouTube afterwards at desyncnerds on YouTube. We are also on... Di- biz- hmm. We are also on Discord at bit.ly slash DSN Discord, all lowercase. Thanks for listening, everyone. Peace.